Welcome back. All right, so unlike other weekends where there's a matinee game early and I do a video on that one alone, uh, instead in this review you're going to get all four games. Uh, and so, yeah, uh, let's go ahead and start things off. We're going to talk about the Blues and the Kraken, uh, two teams that aren't making the playoffs. And honestly, there were long stretches of this game where, I mean, you can tell these teams aren't making the playoffs. Uh, it's Decord versus Hofer. The shots were 3-1 to one for the Blues at six and a half minutes. Not a whole lot to write on the board there. Kraken get some zone time. They weren't getting shots. The one thing I noticed was they were getting lots of time where I could put down. They have pressure. They have pressure. They weren't getting to the net. And then on a rush, McCann buries one top shelf at 14-24. Seattle's up 1-0. Uh, the shots were 8-5 to five for Seattle with two and a half minutes left. But at 18-18, Kapanen uh, puts one through to court on a rush. Torpchenko with the assist. So for Kapanen, that's only his sixth goal this season. Uh, and that woke the fans up a bit. It was kind of quiet. Then with 117 left, there's a four-minute crack in power play. So that didn't make the crowd happy. So that rolls over into the second period. There was a shorthanded rush by Kappen, and he fires wide there. Uh, the Blues finished the kill. Uh, Bolduc was a post away from giving the lead to St. Louis during that period. Shots are 3-2 to two for the Blues at six minutes. And again, the Kraken getting zone time, but kept to the outside anytime they had it. So the Blues just, they'll, they'll give them the zone. They won't give them anything in the middle of the ice. 30 minutes into this game, there were 21 combined shots. So this was what we were calling low event hockey now, and uh, it's happening a lot. Bull Dukes then denied as the Blues press, but yeah, it stays 1-1 after 2. Third period, 59 seconds in, Cairo makes it a 2-1 lead for St. Louis. Kessel and Sod with the assists. We then get a power play for Seattle. That's killed off. There's a near miss for Schwartz. The Blues are blocking a lot of shots as well. So uh, keeping to the outside, lots of shot blocking. Really good defensive game for the Blues. With 6-11 left, the Blues get a power play. But Schneevich hits a post during that. That's killed off. And then at 16-37, Shen bank, banks one in off Decord skate. Uh, Letty and Walker with the assists. So that's one of those intentional bank it in off the goalie kind of goals. It's impressive. Uh, the goalie pull happens with two and a half minutes left. The Kraken call a timeout with 128 left, with one minute left at exactly 19 minutes. Nathan Walker hits the empty net. Your final score in this one's four to one for St. Louis. They go to 43, 33, and five with the win. With the loss, the Kraken 33, 34, and 13. Back below NHL 500. Shots on net, 8-6 Seattle in the first, 11-5 St. Louis in the second, 11-7 St. Louis in the third. Final shots, 28 to, or final, yeah, final shots, 28-20 for the Blues. Power plays, Seattle 0 for 3, St. Louis 0 for 1. The hits, 21-10 for St. Louis. Decord saved 24-27. Hofer, good night for him, 19 saves on 20 shots. And despite the speculation, he might go for an empty net or if he had the chance, he did not. All right, next up. Uh, Colorado and Vegas. So this was kind of the big game out of the four, right? Um, while there was something on the line here, if you're a Rangers fan, this one, these are two playoff teams and they're trying to figure out who's going to finish where. So it's Georgiev versus Hill, early pressed by the Avs. They're kept to the outside. The shots are 3-0 Vegas, three minutes in. Teams exchange turnovers. The Avs press at five and a half minutes. At 7.26 from a sharp angle, um, Colton just catches Hill off the post. Uh, Wood and McCarr with the assists. The Avs press for another. Barbashev has a shot that's held as Vegas presses, but then at 10.34, McCarr wires one from the high slot. McKinnon and Lekkonen with the assists. It's 2-0 Colorado there. Uh, the Avs look for another. The shots are 7-4 for Colorado with 7.5 minutes left. Hurdle has a rush chance that's held. Vegas presses with 2.5 minutes left, but with 8.6 seconds left, Colorado goes to the power play. So it's 2-0 Colorado after one. And they had a really good road period. Second period, McKinnon has a chance that's held. Vegas would finish the kill. Uh, we get a power play for Vegas soon after. It was killed off. No shots on net for Vegas during their power play. Uh, the shots are five, two apiece, five minutes in. Things get pushed in a hold by Georgiev. Uh, hurdle scores, but there's goaltender interference on the challenge. So, yeah, that comes back. That's challenge for goal interference, and it works. No goal. We get two minutes of four-on-four. Four. Teams exchange rushes during the four-on-four. Four. 30 minutes into this game, Vegas had a total of 10 shots. Colorado had done a really good job of shutting them down. At 12.50, Ranton and deflects one short side. Manson and Nachushkin with the assists. It's 3-0 Colorado. Vegas presses with 5.5 minutes left. Abs have some pressure with 3 minutes left. And Dorofiev is denied in the closing seconds. So, after two periods of play, it's 3-0 Colorado. Georgiev's having a good game. All they got to do is bring it home in the third. Yeah, about that. Uh, 254 into the third on a wraparound. Barbashev goes backhand. Uh, Kolasar and Hannafin with the assist there. 
Shots are three to two for Vegas, five minutes in. Vegas ends up getting a power play and they score on it. Uh, William Carlson buries one from the right circle. Dorofiev and Theodore with the assists at 634. Suddenly, it is a three to two game. Drew Ann would hit a crossbar and then at 1622, Carlson buries one on a rush. Howden and White Cloud with the assists. Suddenly, it's a 3 3 tie. And with 11.2 seconds left, Vegas goes to the power play. So they set up early in the overtime. There's a post for Hannafin. Eichel has a shot that's held. And then at 122, Eichel buries the next chance he has. It deflects in. Marcia so and Hannafin with the assists. And so huge comeback victory for Vegas. They go to 44 28 8 with the overtime win. Uh, the 4 3 overtime loss for Colorado puts them at 49 25 and 7. So they're one point back of the Winnipeg Jets. Trying to figure out who's going to get home ice in that first round series. It may very well be Winnipeg. Shots on net, 11-6 Colorado in the first, 11 apiece in the second, 11-2 Vegas in the third. Vegas had both shots in the overtime, including the one that matters. Uh, final shots are 30-24 to 24 for Vegas. Power plays, Colorado 0 for 1, Vegas 2 for 3. Uh, the hits, 28-23 for Vegas. Georgiev saves 26 out of 30, and Aiden Hill saved 21 out of 24. But again, that one kind of felt like a playoff game, didn't it? Uh, now, Colorado, or Carolina, I should say, and Chicago did not feel like a playoff game. So it's Kachekov versus Mrazek. We get a power play for Chicago. That's killed off. Uh, the Canes had the only shot on net six and a half minutes in. It was a quiet start. Uh, pressed by the Canes at seven minutes. The Thanasiu fires one wide on a rush. And then Nazar, his first NHL game, his first NHL shot, is his first NHL goal on a rush. And then he does a nice little goal celebration after. Uh, Jones and Anderson with the assist. That's at 10.05 of the first period. The shots are 7-2 for Carolina with four and a half minutes left. The Hawks press with three minutes left. They don't get shots out of that, though. Shots are 9-2 after the first for the Carolina Hurricanes, but the score is one nothing Chicago. So we go to the second period. Early press by the Canes. The Hawks get pinned down. Pesci fires one wide on a two-on-one rush, and then Jordan Stahl buries his own rebound. Martinuk and Svechnikov with the assists at four minutes and ten seconds. The game is now tied at one. Uh, the Canes press for the lead. The Hawks get a power play. That's killed off. Radish fires one wide on a rush. Uh, the Canes press with nine minutes left. With five minutes left, the shots are 12-9 to nine Carolina. Uh, Gensel's denied. Mrazek holds there. It's 1-1 one, one after two. Third period. The Hawks press at a minute and a half, and eventually, on a rush, Athanasiu buries a rebound. 154 into the third period, Reichel and Donato with the assists. It's a 2-1 lead for Chicago. If Carolina lost this one in regulation today, the Rangers would have clinched the division. So the Hawks look for another. They end up getting a power play. Athanasiu gets shaken up inside the net, so hopefully he's okay. We know he has a lot of injuries in his career. That power play ends up being killed off. Then the Canes get a power play, and Jarvis gets a goal on that power play. Uh, it's deflected in at 624. The NHL app shows it as an own goal by Chicago, which is credited to Jarvis. Uh, the shots are 5-3 to three for Carolina with seven minutes left. With 509 left, Carolina gets a power play, and they score on this one as well. Uh, Jarvis with the goal. Uh, he buries a rebound in this case. Didn't need any help getting that puck in the net. Burns and Svechnikov with the assists at 1627. So now that they're down by... Uh, three to two score. Chicago pulls the goalie, and at 17:54, Aho scores from Gensel. Uh, the offside challenge failed. Now here's why. So the puck is in across the line, but the player coming back to the line tags up before the player entering the zone touches the puck. So this is something that we've seen with offsides before. So tagging up before the puck was touched, it does not count as an offside play. So it was the smart play. I think it was Aho who was bringing the puck across the line. Checks to make sure his teammates tagged up before he touched the puck. Smart move there. So 4-2 to is your final for Carolina. They go to 52-22-7 with the win. With the loss, Chicago 23-52, I should say, and 5. Don't want to take those 10 regulation losses away. Uh, but 23-52 and 5 for the Hawks. Uh, your shots on net in this one, 9-2 Carolina in the first, 16-9 Carolina in the second, 9-5 Carolina in the third. Final shots, 34-16 for Carolina. Power plays, the Canes 2 for 3, Chicago 0 for 3, the hits, 12-9 Chicago. Kachetkov saves 14 out of 16, Mrazek saves 30 out of 33. So, I mean, entertaining game, sure, but uh, if you want goals, well, we got them here. The 80s day is over here. Uh, Ingram versus Wolf, Dones denied and close, and then at 236, Kerfoot opens the scoring from Kesselring and Ingram. He wires that one on a rush, and then Arizona makes it 2-0. At 355, Michelli scores from Bound and Kolyachanik. 
And I'll say it again with Michelli. I just want him to shoot the puck. I think there's a 30 goal scorer in there if he shoots the puck often enough. Shots were 8 0 Arizona at six and a half minutes. So Calgary was kind of sleepy at the start. They obviously make up for it, but it was a tough start. Uh, at 721, though, Manjipani buries one from the slot. Kadri and Pospisil with the assist. That was now the third shot on net for Calgary. And then at 942, on a rush as well, Coronado scores on what was the fourth shot. So goals on back to back shots for Calgary. It's now a 2 2 tie. Uh, we get a power play for the Flames. That's killed off. Calgary with some pressure with three and a half minutes left. With 321 left, though, the Coyotes get a power play, so it's an offensive zone penalty for the Flames. And Gunther at 1754 scores from Dursey and Keller. So that's a power play goal for the Arizona Coyotes, and they have the 3 2 lead after the first period. Second period, the shots are 2 0 Coyotes at three minutes. Carconi has a rush, that's blocked. Uh, Kerfoot has a one timer, that's held. Michelli has a shot this blocker to side. Neither team was getting great chances until at 9.07 on a turnover, uh, Zeri scores from Dryden Hunt. So Dryden Hunt forces the turnover, and Zeri's the beneficiary and gets his 14th goal of the season. Flames draw power play. That's killed off. And then at 15.14, Gunther buries a cross-ice pass. Uh, Unique with the nice pass there, and Keller with the other assist. And then at 16.17, Arizona gets their two-goal lead back. It is Josh Doan from McVeigh and Michelli at 16-17. But Calgary would answer. So Sharon Govich answers with a nice deke in close. Uh, Backlund and Anderson with the assists at 16-50. So that makes it a little bit closer, but the Flames are down 5-4 to four after two. Third period. Uh, a minute and 14 seconds in. It's another goalie caught off the post. Uh, Kadri throws it. There's just this very, very little area there. But if a goalie doesn't hug the post completely... Yeah, they'll go in. Kadri gets this one from Kuzmenko and Anderson. Shots are 3-2 to two for the Flames at 3.5 minutes. We get a power play for Calgary. And Kadri deflects one in for a second goal of the period. Uh, Uyghur and Kuzmenko with the assists at 5.43. So it's 6-5 to five for Calgary. Uh, with 5.56 left, the Flames get a power play. Or the Coyotes get a power play, I should say. That's killed off. Uh, with 1.46 left, the Coyotes call a timeout. With 44.9 seconds left, and the goalie already pulled. It becomes a 6-on-4. So they have the power play, but they are unable to get any closer. Your final score is 6-5. to five. So the Flames hold on and win by one. They go to 37-38-5 with the loss. Arizona 35-41-5. and five. Uh, Arizona now goes home and gets to play Edmonton in the final game that they'll play, likely as the Arizona Coyotes. I believe that one's on Thursday. Shots on net, 16-10 Arizona the first, 11-7 Arizona in the second, 14-8 Calgary in the third. Final shots, 35-31 for the Coyotes. Both teams go one for three on the power play. The hits 27 to 12 for Calgary. Ingram saves 25 out of 31, and Wolf saved 30 out of 35. I thought Wolf had kind of a shaky first period, but I thought he was good after that. So at least it's a game where you can leave him in and let him figure it out. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below, as always. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe if you've not done so already. Thank you guys so much for all your support. I will talk to you again soon.